Hey, and welcome to another video on Image R. Today, I will show you how to engrave awesome images. Let's go! Please follow each step. First, I will unmount the first mirror next to the CO2 tube. I'll use a lens cleaning cloth for glasses to avoid any scratches or fluffs on the mirror. Next, I will use a cotton swab to gently clean the lens inside the tube. Make sure to be very gentle, don't use too much isopropyl, and don't apply too much pressure. Usually, I use one side of the cotton swab soaked in isopropyl, and the other side is used to remove any leftovers from the isopropyl. Now let's attach the cleaned mirror back again next to the tube. I put some duct tape on the mirror and press the pulse button to mark the tape. The goal is to center the spot from the beam as well as possible. If it's in the middle, remove the duct tape and clean the mirror again with a swab and isopropyl. Now we will place duct tape on the second mirror holder. It is extremely important to understand that you only adjust mirror one until you get a straight line from the start to the end point. There is no need to adjust mirror two to get a straight line. It is also not important to hit mirror two in the middle yet. We can adjust that afterwards with the long holes in the mirror two holder. So let's move the head now to the nearest position to mirror one. Hit pulse to mark the nearest position. Now move it to the most distant position and hit pulse again. When you look now at the two spots, you have to understand that the perfect alignment is exactly between these two points. So I have to get the top marking a little down by turning the bottom two screws on mirror holder one counterclockwise by 10 degrees. If you hit pulse again, it should have marked between these two spots. Remove the tape and apply a new one and repeat this process until the same spot gets hit twice. If your duct tape starts burning, like here, you're on a good path since it nearly hit the same spot twice. But please always keep an eye, with glasses, on the duct tape while doing this process. That's how a first mirror should look like when it's perfectly aligned. Now, we don't have to touch the first mirror at all anymore. Keep it as it is. If it didn't hit the center of mirror two, make sure to change the mirror holder position of mirror two, but do not change anything on mirror one. Now, we will clean mirror two from any residues due to the duct tape and repeat the whole process for mirror two. I will increase the speed a little. It is basically the same steps as on mirror one. It means first go to the nearest point of mirror two and then to the most distant point of mirror two. Compare the two burn marks and adjust the beam in the middle of them. You'll get a feeling for this as soon as you do it a few times. As you see, we have now mirror one and mirror two perfectly aligned. Again, if it doesn't hit the middle of mirror three, use the long holes on mirror three to adjust that. Do not turn around on mirror two anymore. It's perfect. For the last mirror, you can put duct tape on the nozzle and make sure to give it some pressure so it makes an imprint of the nozzle's hole. If you press pulse now, you should see the marking in the middle of the nozzle imprint. If it's not, adjust the three screws on the third mirror holder until it hits the center. 
After we have aligned the laser perfectly, we need to clean the lenses before we can determine the focus. So, I will do it basically the same way as I did on the mirrors. Detach everything, clean lenses with the cleaning cloth for glasses and attach it back together. Don't be confused why I have two lenses in my nozzle. I use the cloud ray compound lens to get a smaller dot size and therefore more details in the engravings. A tutorial about compound lenses is in the top right corner. Now we will increase one side of our plywood to determine our focal length and set the focus perfectly. Load a single line in your laser program and try to mark the wood by setting the line to cutting, but use more speed so it won't actually cut through. The line should start thicker, get thin in the middle, and become thick again at the end. If that's not the case on your end, play around with the distance from the nozzle to the wood or change the angle of the wood. When you have a line that looks like I explained, use a digital caliper and measure from a fixed point, for example, the laser head, the distance to the material. On my end, it's 60.73 millimeters, which I will fix now with the screw on the caliper. That caliper can be used now as a measurement tool for your distance. You have to do the ramp regularly, especially when changing lenses. Remove the stuff you use to increase the level for the wood and place the wood flat on the laser table. Now, let's use our caliper to measure the height to the material. To determine the levels from our laser, we need to run this grayscale test. You have to choose grayscale in the image mode in Lightburn and run the file. The test image has 318 dpi and you can download it from the link in the description below. As you can see, it only engraved around 50% of the image. This means that all whites underneath 50% won't be burned and you will lose a lot of details. Let's prepare the image now on image-r.com. After uploading, resize your image to your needed size. For DPI, I will choose 423, but I will show you in a minute how to determine the correct DPI value. We know that our laser only engraves around half of the needed levels, so we will reduce them by half to 128. The image appears much darker now, but we will fix this in a second. I will apply Sharpen Method 2 to increase the details in the image. Since the image will be very dark right now, I will increase the gamma value to brighten up the darks while keeping the whites. Now we can choose our algorithm. In my case, it's the Kasia Wood algorithm, as it works perfectly with my 80 watt CO2 laser. Increase brightness a little to make the very bright whites pop more. Save the image as PNG and then click on DPI test. Choose a small area with a lot of details and tick the DPI values you want to test. It will download a zip file, extract it and import it into Lightburn. Arrange them however you want, set the image mode to pass through and press start. As you see, it will now engrave different parts of the image with each DPI to find out the best one for you. You only have to do the DPI test once per material. Now after we have figured out the DPI and the levels, let's burn the complete image. Give it a quick swipe with any brush and be happy with an awesome result. Without the yellow light from the laser, you can see the beauty in the piece even better. Give it a try, use levels and get an awesome engraving. See you soon. Bye.